So, we are joined today by uh, Sage, and we have uh, Base Inc. I'm going to be subbing in for um, Lotus Knight. Welcome to Schoolstone. How is everybody doing? Yeah, today? welcome. Hey. Hello. We've got some terrific matches today. Oops, I forgot uh, Base Inc. Some, some uh, illustration or the, 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 the graphic. <laughs> That is my anodon that's being posted right now, but that'll soon change. So, oh, do you, do you have my graphic? I, I does, yeah, I do. All right, all right, good deal. So, I totally forgot to ask. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, 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 Skittles, I'm talking to Skittles right now. Uh, we're not sure where my anodon or not my uh, where Mata. I don't know how I got that mixed up. Where Mata is just yet. Yeah, they haven't I got on yet. I got a response from Mata. He should be hopping on soon. He was just uh, a little busy. Yeah. All good. Okay, good deal. So, while I fix the graphic, how are you guys doing? Um, but what do you guys got planned for the rest of the day, I should say? Nothing. Oh, my day is free and open, and that's why I was like, you guys asked if you had any casters, you know, uh, if anybody wanted to cast, and I was like, sure. I didn't make any plans for Saturday, unfortunately. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and do it. Uh... But yeah, I, I'm doing all right. I already had some some coffee, and I've transitioned smoothly to beer. So, be all right. <laughs> well, well, you have the birds nicely chirping in the background there. So, yeah, and maybe we can expect the train to come by at some point. There you go. And base Inc. Um, so your your spot out west coast is got a few droplets of snow, eh? Yeah, we got a little bit of snow. Um, you know, everything's starting to really shut down over here, and and and. I'm mm -hmm. in Washington State, but, you know, it's pretty nice out. Um, got some sleeping dogs, and uh, I'll be playing a match um, in the same uh, same series as uh, this one that we're about to watch <laughs> later today. So speaking of match, we have Skittles uh, from Taste the Rainbow versus Matta uh, from the Menagerie in our Pro Series. Um, and we also have Ron Mexico with Fourth and Inches and Nate... Um, from the stubs there in the legacy series um this is gonna be like quarterfinal uh, playoffs there so um but we'll start yeah. with the first match so i want to get you guys' idea on the t on their their uh their lineups there 
Well, uh, I've got it all written down here. Skittles brought Galakrond Warrior and Rogue, Res Priest and Quest Hunter, which is a pretty solid lineup. And Mata brought Res Priest, Highlander Mage, Gala Rogue, and Mech Paladin, which seems actually really strong into Skittles' lineup, I would say. Uh, probably just ban the Hunter and win, I'd say. I think Mata probably has uh, the, the advantage here with the class picks, at least. Yeah, I agree. Um, it, it looks a little rough for the priest on uh, on Skittles lineup with uh, Mata bringing both Mage and Rogue. Yes. Um, as, you know, so it, it'll be really interesting to see how that that plays out. And then it, he's also they're both playing Mass Dispel, so that priest matchup could come down to who's got a bigger board and able to Mass Dispel and and, and push that last bit of damage through. So uh, it should be really interesting. Oh yeah. And Skittles is offline. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be back in a moment. Yeah, Mata is also offline, but he did add, so he's working his way into it. Try to, no, Skittles is back. Now he's gonna, where is Mata at? I, I'm ready to jump right into this. Saku, how has your weekend been going, my boy? My man. And thank you for uh, stepping in for Lotus, by the way. And no response. <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Oh, there we go. Sorry. My mic was muted. Silly me. No, oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't ignoring you, so my weekend is going pretty good. That's good. So, uh, what plans do you have for the rest of the day after this? Um, watching a movie, I guess. Oh, yeah, it sounds like probably something I'll end up doing. <laughs> I actually just watched the movie Knives Out with my dad the other day, and nice. it was really excellent. I, I don't know if y'all have seen that, but it was so good. It was very twisty and turning. <laughs> That sounds... I, I'm really interested. So, I know nothing about it. I avoid all trailers, but I'm very excited. Alright. So it looks like we got bands in, at least uh, the secret chart that we're supposed to be able to look at. So Mata's uh, band Rogue, and Skittles is band Priest. That's interesting. Why the Rogue pen? I guess Mata's not scared of the quest hunter. Unless I'm looking at this chart wrong, but... Uh, he could be looking to match up the Paladin into the Quest Hunter, um, try and get that early jump on it, but it, it is kind of interesting. Uh, the, the Rogue Band makes sense for both the Paladin and uh, your Mage, so I can see merit to it. Yeah. <laughs> the can roosters. You hear that? Oh yeah, we can hear the birds and the roosters. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, all right, so I'm just gonna make some adjustments on the screen. Um, any anything? Any other uh, uh, notable notable tech, uh, texts that are in each other's uh, decks there? So uh, this is the most prep I've ever done for any uh, casting opportunity yet. And I gotta say, I did not do that much research into the classes. I just looked to see what they were. <laughs> <laughs> so um, base, the, the, did you take a closer look? Uh, looking at it right here, um, so Mata's lineup of what's, at least what's left, because I've already deleted the band deck. Um, uh, Mata's bringing the puzzle box in the mage, which um, has actually been performing surprisingly well, according to stats. Um, even though it might think the other way, um, there's no bullies in the rogue, which uh, might make that warrior matchup a little bit harder. And then uh, in the paladin, there's an Octasari at the top, which you love to see. Yeah, Octasari is like a crazy, crazy card. That was um, I think brought out last night. If anybody watched uh, Friday Night Fights, which was kind of interesting. So more, more draw. Yeah, um, and then 
On the other side, Skittle's got some uh, pretty standard lists. Um, you got double Battle Rage in the Warrior, so a lot of draw. Um, chosen to forego the Bloodsworn Mercenaries in the Burst. Uh, it still has the Leroy. Um, and then in the Quest Hunter, uh, there is a single Bone Wraith and a single Cult Master. Uh, looks like cutting one clear of the way. Um, and I'm not sure. Oh, the other Faceless Corruptor. So a hmm. uh, little bit thicker in the four slot. Um, got some options there. I, I actually really like the Cult Master. I think it's uh, one of the ways you lose with Quest Hunter is when you run out of stuff to play. Right. Um, so just the one Cult Master will change it so that there's a lot of games where you just get to go down with a Cult Master and uh, clear their board and draw like the rest of your deck. So it's a, it's a really worthwhile inclusion. Trying to, trying so to uh, Skittles just messaged me saying that he has some quick banking to do and he's gonna log off Hearthstone. But if Mata gets on and ping him, and I was like, he should be on soon, guys. Okay. Like, uh, <laughs> he should be on soon. Oh my goodness, I might have to go inside. It's starting to rain out there. Yeah, while we're no, it's just uh, I'm not the only person on my patio. Oh, okay, it's all good. So while we're waiting, we can uh, kind of quickly go over, I guess, some of the uh, pro matches. So we have uh, Aeon versus Unknown, who's currently losing five to five to ten. Some I don't know if there's any surprise. Well, there's a three and zero by Ron Mexico over Mark Shire. That's kind of a surprise. Mark's usually pretty pretty steady. Uh, we got FTL versus the uh, the Beer Boys, so that's currently at nine to eight. Um, still two more games to go. Yeah, I was talking to Ron last night in the or no this morning before uh, school time, and he said mm -hmm. that he had just gotten a sweep on uh, in pro again, and he's really happy about it. I'm happy. For him. Yeah, he's doing a lot better in pro since uh, since he faced me. <laughs> I, 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 love, I love the guy. See, you're you're his inspiration. Yeah, man. No, well, he was my inspiration, so, you know. Until you, just... until you slagged him in two series. Yeah. Poor at, Ron. At, at some point, the, the apprentice has to become a master, right? Yeah, that's right. And now we have the Menagerie and Taste of Rainbow, which is part of the group that's being shown today. So Menagerie's up 9 to 5. So with this game, this could... Uh, could set the tone for the menagerie. Being up quite a bit, three one in one match and three zero with um, Smork over Quirky Turtle. Tap last uh, versus the other guys. That that one's pretty much done. So it's a twelve three outing so far with two more games to go. Top headed Titans versus Bad to the Bone. That one's six five with uh, two games already played. Uh, by Starlax and Pasca. That was last night's... Was it last night's match? No. No, that was Starlax and somebody else. Um, you know, if Mata takes any longer, uh, it, I think uh, Skittles should just take the DQ. <laughs> <laughs> so, so based, you've been, you've been talking to Mata, right? Uh, a little bit. Uh, yeah. Let me uh, shoot him another message. Yeah, tell him to hurry his butt up. Making the good people at THL wait. <laughs> wait for their greatness. There you go. Yeah, I know. It, 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 uh, it's, you know, this thing about making fashion be late. Like, nobody notices you when you're on time. But <laughs> you show up late, everybody does. It's like, where, where are they at? They're like 20 minutes late. What's going on? Well, 10 minutes late. Sorry. Because of the stream, stream delay. Yeah. What? And I would like to thank all of our viewers for being patient with us in this time of crisis. <laughs> and, exactly. and be sure to wash your hands. And don't touch your mouth, eyes, and... Well, I mean, at least wait Close. until you washed your hands to start touching your face. Right. So it looks like Mata might have a bug because he's saying he's online. <laughs> hmm. 
I'm going to restart Hearthstone and see what happens. Uh, he is also restarting Hearthstone. He did respond. tweet about this match. <laughs> What's that? So you think he's getting cold feet about this match? Maybe, maybe. He did respond at almost 2 o'clock uh, my time, so be 1 o'clock Eastern. Saying, sounds great, but after that... So how many games is left in the uh, Pro Series? Uh... So this is the second to last week. Uh... Next week will be the, the nail-biting finish for playoffs because there's about seven teams still in the running here uh, for very wow. serious contention. Yeah. Uh, I might be wrong, and it could be like eight, but it is uh, a ton. Well, I know my team isn't doing too hot. I'm on the Fias Brotherhood. I'm actually the two seed, if you can believe it. <laughs> I believe it. Your, your status went up after you beat Ron a couple times. Yeah. Not that it was low yeah, in the first place. That's what happened. <laughs> I'm still a five seed in the other series. <laughs> <laughs> which which it, it, everybody's been telling me is very unfair. <laughs> yes. As a five seed, I would say yes. <laughs> but it's been fun. We had a good match. It was a mm -hmm. 3 2. Slobber knocker. Yeah, man. It was a slug pass for sure. Um, so we're still yeah, waiting. I, for... I remember, uh, like, we made finals, and I asked the team uh, if, you know, they wanted me to, you know, just, like, I don't know, no contest or something to, you know, shore up PR stuff and whatever. Mm -hmm. And they were like, no, 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 no. We're going to 5 0 them to assert dominance. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right man i'm on board yeah put them put them on notice yeah so talking with mata he is trying to decline or challenge challenge but it auto declines so there's got to be something going on uh we're trying to figure hmm. yeah i don't even see him online maybe the the battle tag that you had for him was correct Nope, we have the correct battle tag with the, uh, the 12 8 9. Okay. I'm not even seeing him online. No, I don't see him online either. One of the many, many wonderful things that can happen when you're streaming and trying to get on, on, on a match. No. Yeah, uh, last week I just had an issue where uh, my mulligan weren't showing anything. And I had to... Wait, did, does his client need to update? Uh, see, see if uh, his client needs to update. Yeah, I'll, I'll check. Just gonna, well, I'm sure Skittles is getting updated as it is, so I'll just update him real quick. Yeah, but no, I'm, I'm on mobile. It's kind of a pain for me to talk to people. And yet, the uh, saloon guys, whenever I passed with them, always had me doing all the communication <laughs> with the players. And thank you again, THL, for being patient with us mm -hmm. at this time. Uh, trying, trying to figure out what's uh, what's going to happen. If we're say Snail, we can, if they have time, um, we can put them in the two o'clock two o'clock spot if Nate and Ron Mexico can go. Yeah, yeah, that 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 works. Uh, has anybody gotten in touch with them? I know I could. I I can do that right now. Here. So. Uh, if uh, based, if you want to keep in contact with Matt to see if uh, he if he if he's okay playing at the uh, at the two o'clock.
Yeah, I'll send him that message. Oh, I'll do the same with um, Skittles here. All right. And who was Ron's opponent? Nate. Nate, right. Message Nate, messaging homeboy Ron. Yeah, talking to Mata, uh, he's cool trying to play the two o'clock spot uh, and figure out what's going on. Okay, Sk Skittles hasn't responded yet, but. Uh... Um, Nate's good to go for right now. I'm just uh, double checking with with Mr. Mexico. He's typing. Yeah, I just sent him a message myself. Are you are you smacking him around, making sure? Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm sure Ron's fine with it. And it just shows Mata as having come online just now. Oh, really? Okay. Great. <laughs> so they can go right now, or... Alright. I'll let, I'll let base to handle Mata, and then if he's good to go right now, we can go. If he can challenge uh, Skittles, we'll, we'll stick with that. Just sent him a message. Hopefully, we're good to go soon. But yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll have a match for you here very shortly. I promise. Uh, yeah, Mata said he's good to go. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna message Nate saying, "Never mind, match one, good to go." So, let's see if we can get rolling here. Since we know the bands, the bands are the uh, Rogue for Skittles, and, priest. and right. Mada's Priest is done. All right. So, uh, who's going to be on the bottom? So, we're going to have Mada on the bottom, so that's our first to spectate. And um, we're going to have Skittles on top. I might do it backwards, just that way I have a different perspective for you guys. Okay. Just told both players they can start. <laughs> Did you do the whole finger pointing thing? Hold on, one minute. <laughs> uh, Skittles. Looks like they re rolled for the friend quest real quick. Okay. <laughs> yes, I did do the, I did do the figure thing. Did yes. you? <laughs> I, I I could I could sense it as soon as she as soon as I heard the voice. I, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Matt is All right, we're finally getting into it. 
All right. Okay, so this have they started getting online here? Wonderful. So I uh <clears throat> I don't see oh there it is. Yeah, it looks like they're both hanging out in the main menu. Anytime now. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Mata just sent me a message saying it keeps booting him offline. That's uh, why I think he might be going back to the uh, main menu. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right, well, maybe we, we have Ron and Nate come in anyways, if we're just going to keep having these issues. Okay. It seems right. like they're both ready to go anyway. They, they are, yeah. Ron's just uh, hanging out in the menu, so... Um... Yeah, uh, I was, I was uh, uh, talking with Ron a bit last night, and we managed to get top 100 legend. Nice. Uh, yeah. So he's at, he's he, at the uh, 1, 2, 3 mark right now. Yes, he is, and that has got to be very intimidating for anybody he goes up against to like get on <laughs> to play against, you know, Ron and see him at top 100 legend and be like, oh god, what have I gotten myself into? Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I think when I played him in pro, he was only a top 800, something like that. So it wasn't too intimidating. I was only rank five. That's so he he was intimidated looking at your rank five because yeah. you're top ten, right? Yes, yes, very much so. So he, just... he also uh, knows that this is like the most hard time I've played in a long time. Mm -hmm. You have been on a lot. It, the game is just really fun. I honestly just can't get enough right now. It is. I actually just opened up the Highlander cards maybe about two months ago. So. Yeah, I happen to get a golden deck. Nice. So, uh, we are in. We are looking at uh, Mada and Skittles. I saw this encounter. Hello, they need hello, to... hello. Cool. So we got Skittles with uh, starting with his priest and Mada with. The Paladin. Not much on. I'm trying to get the spectator going. Yeah, it's good. So you probably start out with the Mecharu. Magnetizer? Okay. Do you go wide here or you go, you just stack it? And for some reason, I can't expect it anybody. I think I need to reach out my client. My goodness. Uh, I like going mm -hmm. wide. Um, it does let them actually clear off one thing if they, they have the penance, but uh, you're actually able to start splitting up your attacks, maybe trade in if they play something that takes a bit of effort to get. Mm -hmm. Goblin tech is probably a good one just to <laughs> Just just get the biggest thing out on the board, start trying to push some damage. Um, we got a pretty decent hand uh, on the other side for Skittles, which mm -hmm. uh, should really start to let him uh, come down, as long as he doesn't fall too far behind here. So, looking at this, I really like the Skyclaw. Let's you... Um, Put a lot of stuff on the board, you know, they probably want to come down with a convincing infiltrator, but um, you see that he also has a Zilli, Zilliax to choose from, um, but there is merit to just putting down the Micro Mummy um, for the uh, the Anoyo module. Yep. But, you know, you're really looking to curve into that war gear, uh, getting to go face, so uh, Skyclaw, I think, is the best way of ensuring that you have... Um, a pretty reliable way to get Hello? through anything they're going to play. 
trying to make a decision on whether to magnetize and I think it's a good move there to magnetize onto the the old bot. Yeah, and with that that grave rune pick up uh anything that sticks is really going to um uh, make it hard for the model to get it to. But uh going with the Zilliax probably gonna be looking to um follow that up with a psycho bomb and make something nearly impossible for the this uh paladin get <laughs> to march on through, right. So I'll just get a look at Blessing of Kings is not going to do anything right now. But, okay, so, yeah, we're, we're seeing a lot of pressure coming out of uh, Mata. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we're just, I think Skittles is just okay to, uh, end off the pressure. Trying to run Mata out of resources. Still got a ways to go to what happened. Yep. Yeah, with, with the Octasari in hand, uh, Mata's really gonna just need to keep uh, putting on gradual pressure until he can, on 8, drop Octasari, uh, refill, and then hopefully finish the game out from there. Yeah, he's gonna really, really be praying that uh, Skittles doesn't have the Master Spell. Did, did Skittles bring Master Spell? I believe so. Yes, they both have a, a copy of Master Spell. A Master Spell would be devastating for uh, Mata once the Octasar comes out. Yeah, um, I mean it, it's gonna hurt uh, no matter what. But um, or even a play yeah. of death, I think there's a lot of ways this could go wrong for Mata here. Yeah, this is a, a matchup that really skews in the priest's favor. Um, I mean, I think right here, you really should be looking to build a board, push some damage, so we're probably going to see this, and maybe a, a magnetized snip snap to just push as much possible face. Running out of resources. This is sorry to come down next turn. Mata. Probably hope that nothing bad happens to the Octasari. Uh, cross, yeah. cross the fingers. Um, on the uh, other side, lots of options. Oh, yeah. days. I think uh, Skittles is in a really good position to just kind of fend off and put turn nine. Play the death of the Octasari. As long as Skittles doesn't play anything with too much power, then the Octasari won't die. And uh, we'll be able to play good death it and run a lot of completely out of gas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's looking like this uh, could just end the game right here. Whatever you do, Skittles, don't play Galaga. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no coaching. <laughs> I think you uh, probably want to just put a grave rune on this, yeah. make it so that they never get through the Zilliax. Um, yeah. yeah I mean, just... there is the merit of just dropping a card to making sure that nothing gets hit, or, or even... Oh, that is an yeah, interesting thing. If, if that gets cast on the Arc of Star, play of Death. Well, play of Death. Yeah. 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 Where's it go? Oh, that's right. bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, poor Mata. What can you do, though? You play Mata play with not what you totally get. out of gas yet. No. Unity. Precision. Not out of gas, but uh, I don't know if you can ever get through this board. They're spending a lot of resources to play Plague of Death. Uh, I mean, I don't even think you need to play of Death. You know? Uh, like, as long as you don't let the Octasari die, it, it's probably fine. You could even just go Mass Res here, get a double Mass Res, and build an even tougher board to get through. Just seems yeah, it it could really be bad. premature to play good death here. Yeah, like you, I mean, you could even 
argue that it's time to just ignore their board and go face. But yeah, there's a conceit. Good conceit there by the other. Just to review, this is going to be conquest rules for the for the pro series. So once you win, you can't use that deck list anymore. Um, so that's race, race, race down for skittles. Yep. With the right. uh, the priest already gone, it's a uh, not looking incredibly great for for uh, mana skittles. Uh, in a pretty good spot from here on out, especially with this, uh, this warrior Q in the. Yeah, the warrior uh, typically has a really great matchup into Mech Paladin. So, and this opening hand for Mata is devastatingly bad. <laughs> it's called so Terry slow. Bad. Terry Bad. Well, you get a Galvanizer, but. Yeah. Not a whole lot to go with it. Yeah, but uh, not. Not a particularly strong hand on the other side. There is a lot of draw, so we might see a coin, acolyte, and a, a battle rage come down next turn, or an inner inner rage. Or just clean up the mech, prevent any any magnetization. It looks like Mata's picking up some gas here. As long as he's top deck staying good and cheap, Mata will be in a decent position. Having a war gear next turn is is gonna be good if it's if the mummy stays on board. Absolutely. Yeah, I kind of like uh, also playing out the Glowtron to to really really make it hard to clear off both mechs in the same turn mm -hmm. uh, to kind of guarantee the the war gear. But uh, going a little slower, save the the Glowtron for for a later turn. Maybe I it. think uh, a decent play that Skittles could do here would be to hit with the weapon, inner rage to kill it, and then awaken to clear the board. Yeah, that's that's definitely the the very heads up play and uh um yeah. It, it invests a bit of resources, but you kinda have to. And with this play oh they're basically doing the same thing but a little different from the way I described it. With that uh, Skypod pickup, yeah. We're gonna yeah, see Skypod pickup. Converting stored energy. This is really what you wanted to do to awaken mm -hmm. into is the Skypod. But... This will clean it up, but you do have the Warrior coming down the other way. Um, not a good way in the hand to clean up the Warrior. And uh, if you don't want to swing a, a weapon charge into the 1 1, or a. Uh, a Galcron invoke into the 1 1, you could experience another war gear. Indeed. I will act as your scale. We're going to see Skittles try to fend off the uh, pressure from the war gears here. is just picking up some really good really good gas yeah um i think that you might want to be saving the galvanizer for after your octasari turn um the question here is do you want to develop the goba glide and take off this the turnium rover there's uh no snip snap in skills list to magnetize to it though i don't think see the galvanizer come out for more stats just double checking to see if Skittles has like Zilliax or something. So much rage! The Awaken is good, but there's nothing to really go with it in order to clear the rest of the board out. And you're going to be taking uh, quite a bit of face damage here. Um, so, one man off of the win, but uh, this is a really good spot for, for uh, Mata. We might be able to see an out with maybe a risky skipper draw and gaining a lot of armor next turn for uh, Skittles, but that might be the only way. Job done. Reporting for duty. Skittles is just hoping this something is the end of all things. Easy. 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 
game three. It is one to one. Uh, Mata has pulled out the win with uh, Mech Paladin and an unfavored matchup, which is good. Uh, probably end up seeing the Galakrond Warrior again out of Skittles, I'd say. Uh, they banned they banned the priest, so they don't have to worry about that. And it's great into both Galakrond Rogue and Highlander Mage. So I imagine we'll see the warrior again. So I I think actually you might want to be bringing the hunter. That's where you get your 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 um, your favorites. Where the other two are pretty even with the uh, with the warrior. It really depends on who draws better in those matchups. And that's what it looks like. Surprise with the mage. Oh, but. Not, not sure if. Uh, what the matchup sequences for mage versus uh, hunter? Plus hunter at that? Um, I think it's a. Uh... It's one of the more even mage versus hunter matchups, but you're still playing a hunter, which you hate to see, and uh, you're uh, you're still unfavored, but not as much as if it was say um, Highlander or or even even scarier the Dragon Hunter for the mage. But not actually a lot going on in Skittle's hand. You really want to pick up that uh, swarm of locusts soon. All right, and uh, yeah, if you're Skittles, you're just trying to progress your quest and not really care too much about what the Highlander Mage is doing because they're going to take it slow. Uh, I think you're probably going to. Oh, wow. Swarm locusts. I, yeah. I, I could imagine them going coin swarm next turn. Next turn. Next turn. <laughs> Tricking over your tongue, dear. Yep. Yes, sir. All good. That's yeah, like a good big lumpy dragon in the middle there. I, I have completely forgotten who is going first or second because they both have coins. Uh, Skittles went first this game. Right. So I don't know if I like that turn, um, especially with uh, a Reno and the Dragon caster in hand. I'm not sure if I want to uh, drop out the uh, the rest of it. Maybe save it for a coin re. Yeah, because now they're in a kind of awkward position where, like, do you commit the Luna to the board? Like, you kind of have to. Yeah, right now. You, know, you really want for your post pocket galaxy turns. Yeah, and now uh, Skill is holding on to the burst combo of Leroy on the uh, Once they get to 10, 10 mana, uh, anything you put on board can and will be used against. In a quarter dogs. Well, uh, yeah, we're uh, gonna see this quest getting completed pretty quick here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that swarm. Probably just either dropping the Reno or the Cartit Defender. Um, I think that Reno's fine here. It develops the most, clears it off. Um, you get punished by the second swarm of this, but uh, there it is. <laughs> And just, that is just as uh, you called it, quest least. complete next turn. Yeah, so he might be saving that to, to complete it with that, and uh, then uh, then fill up the board and then buff them. So yeah. that way, if you don't answer that board, you uh, are likely to die in the back. Right. Oh my goodness, my city is so noisy. I see a vision in the place. <laughs> Wow, it's not too many uh, good good choices here. Yeah, not really what you're looking for here. But okay. yeah, take the Ray of Frost and, and just uh, it's the best option. And 
And if you're doing Zephyrus, what are you looking for? It looked like he was... Interesting. Hanging over Zephyrus there. So what's he, what, what is he trying to play in there? Um, probably just something to clear, uh, clear the minion, maybe an eviscerator or, or whatnot. I think it's all going to go downhill for, uh, Mata from here. As unfortunate as that is. Yeah, he's not in a, not in a great spot, but if he can, uh, get down like a Luna's and, uh, start drawing the deck, uh, turn around, but... It is really going to come up, come down to what he draws coming up here. Oh yeah, I think he's kind of praying for a blizzard, which he doesn't have in his company at the moment. Uh, even a frost nova in pair would be great. There's a frost nova, just... I think we probably see a Zeph into arcane explosion here, would be a, would be a really good motto. Yeah, uh, maybe a holy nova. A holy nova, yeah. yeah. There it is. Swipe's okay too, but... Well, we're gonna look at him trying to get the most tempo out of that turn, which is definitely yeah. a good play. So right here is a weak spot in the turn for uh, Skittles, so... Um, he's gonna be able to clear off the Dread Infernal and set up for anything that lives on board, getting to uh, push a lot of damage with the... Uh, no, chooses not to clear the Dread Infernal. So, Mata needs to be very careful here to not overcommit to the board and make it easier for the Skittles to get a lethal out with the Leroy Unleash turn. So, it's base is 14, and then you add 3 for everything that lives. So, going to go up to. Uh, oh, wow, that Flark is a really, really that is great a pickup. Huge pickup. Probably see the Mali Gate or the Yog. The puzzle box. Yep, Ron likes Ron. The puzzle box is definitely a, a Hail Mary here. <laughs> yeah, but um, that is going to end the game right here. Yeah, I think with that, we have Lethal coming out for the Unleash and Leroy turn. <laughs> yep. So that was game three. Uh, going into game four, I think uh, there's only one deck left for Skittles to play. Uh, the Galakrond Warrior, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, correct. So um, without the, the Boom Pistol Bullies in, in any of these decks, uh, it's going to be a really fair fight. No one can really uh, just lock the other out of the turn. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm going to give it to Skittles because you have two games to get through and a. Uh, Pretty, pretty neutral matchups uh, for for both the decks, but um, yeah, you get the two shots to get your warriors. Let's see if I'm Skittles here. I'm feeling pretty good. Galakrond yeah, like Warriors been one of my favorite decks this, this expansion, and I actually didn't bring it this week. I don't think in any of the series. Wait, no, I think I brought it in something. Legacy. Uh, <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I um, it's what I used to hit Legend this season, and uh, the deck is just very powerful. To be honest, it I certainly have, is. I haven't played it all that much until the last two weeks, <laughs> so I'm still kind of getting used to the nuances of it, if there is any. I mean, there's a lot of nuance, but I don't like the pink face. Uh, yeah. You, yeah that... You're just activating the battle rage. Rudy, go I think that's part of the nuance in the matchup is being careful not to activate the battle rage. Still going face. Uh, He's yeah. just committed to the line. Yeah, once once you've done it, it is time to just commit to the line. We're probably going to see uh, the armor or the battle rage come out right now. Yep, the battle rage. Much rage. It's not a bad hand. Uh, a lot of defensive tools for mm -hmm. Mata here. Yeah, uh, you really want to, in the next two turns, clean up the... Uh, um, 
the Bomb Wrangler, so that way you can on six uh, drop the Reno and start winning this board back. Yeah, and uh, Fittings has not managed to get any invokes yet. And while Metal Mata doesn't know this, but uh, Skittles has both sounds in hand. Yeah, he does need to pick up one more invoke to activate them. Um, I don't like trading in the Bomb Wrangler. I like using the, the Rush and then the face to clear off the front. Oh yeah. It, it pushes more damage face, um, leaves you with a 4-2 instead of a 2-2. Two -two. Um, you, you're not really concerned about your face damage, so you're going to be using your face to clear off as, as much as you can. There's a quick pickup on the Ice Barrier, which was, I do believe, correct. I didn't see anything else that really worth taking. And it'll help them to survive a little bit. And I think Reno is probably not very good here. Yeah, well, you don't okay. really... Uh, but you're just probably gonna do this and um, set up a whiteboard. I like the magnetize here. They don't really have a way to deal with it. Um, that separate well, from the magnetize. That's true. They also don't really have a way to deal with whiteboards either outside of awaken. But uh, awaken is only good for one one. But you have to clear the two threes off first to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. But that's just because Galakron Warrior's primary focus is just hit the face, hit it very hard, hit it very fast. Um, I like the CM map coming down. It gives you the most uh, pressure coming the other way. Um, you get to throw out this whole board and uh, start putting it to the opponent's face. Um, we're probably going to see an Awaken that's and incredible. Scion come down. Oh, that was an unfortunate bomb. A hit for a three damage right into his face. And that could honestly be the difference at this point because of all the pressure that uh, Skittles has been putting on. I'm not in love with this play. I can see why he did it. Uh, you're taking off. value out of the Awaken. Yeah, um, the going face is interesting because you're opening yourself to, to a lot of damage coming the other way um and uh this maligos pickup alongside an ice barrier is gonna um really put mata in a pretty solid position going into the uh, dragon queen turn next turn oh the fireball nice yeah so he's got the burst he's got a lot of pressure to fill up the board next turn he's got ways to clear the board it's uh it's looking not too bad, especially sitting at effectively 16. Yeah, and uh, Galakron Warrior does not run Mortal Strike, which is good for uh, Mata at this point. So the only option is to Honor hit face. Yeah, I, I don't like this. Cause he's, he's doing this probably to just push as much face damage as possible instead of clear off as much of the board as possible with the, the Scion, uh, which is going to give... Uh, Mata a little bit of breathing room going into this turn. I think he was doing that as well to fully invoke the Galakron. So he can go into turn 9 and swing for 8 right into the face. Yeah, um, you know, the issue is that now you're going to contend with the Dragon Queen and Alex Straza turn. Uh, yeah, which... I'm thinking that Skittles is just done trading at this point and just hopes that nothing can come to stop him from bursting his water down. Oh wow, the rock nest is pretty good here, but he played the other dragon already. Though. A little, yeah, a little ordering error. Uh, I still like, at this point, just playing the rot nest, uh, because you have so much pressure going the other way. Um, yeah. I think we're looking at is this lethal for Mata here? I've got 5, 13, 15, 21, 29, 30 with the ping. That is lethal. Yep, and that will end the game as long as Mata sees it. Well, there's nothing for him to trade into, so if he gets home. Oh, wow. And that definitely ends the game. I think either would either way work. No, I think he only had 21 on the board, so he has to do the fireball and ping route. 
Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Uh, not going immediately into it, so he might not see it. I think he sees it. Still got the Alex here sitting yeah, pretty it could be <laughs> Yeah, I just... You, you can Alex your own face. You're not dead to the, the other thing, but yeah, he does not see the lethal. And... Oh, come on, Mata. Just count. Do the math. Make the rest of your trades, see what the face looks like, and then uh, just, just end the game. Yeah. I think he sees it. No! <laughs> oh, he did. Okay. Wait. No, he, he missed because he, did. he didn't have enough mana after the ping. So, with a. Uh, yep. Oh my goodness. Let's see the, uh, the win for Skittles here. Able to clean up the, uh, the Zilliacs with just uh, AoE and uh, end the game. Oh. Poor Mata. He had it. That could have gone to game five, and uh, my condolences, my fatal misplay. Do we want to bring uh, Skittles in for an interview? I'll double check with uh, Skittles here in two seconds. Okay. Yeah, let's get him in here. That is a big win for uh, Taste of Rainbow. Yes. Uh, who was ahead before that? Uh, Menagerie was up nine to one, which will bring it or nine to five. Sorry, not nine to one. Um, so that'll bring it to uh, ten to nine uh, in the uh, the Menagerie's favor, coming down to the final game. Oof. Wow, uh, so, it's anybody's game at this point. So the. Uh... Skittles is able to join us. He just needs a quick second. Probably got to grab a mic or a headset or something. Okay. Just telling the other two players uh, in match two that they can they can uh, get us to band while we're doing an interview here. All right. I, I already know what Ron Mexico's ban is, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we already we already said that. That was Sage. It's banning Sage. So. Yes, he's banning me. But I'll go ahead and let Ron tell you. Okay. It maybe uh, maybe Nate is watching the stream. <laughs> <laughs> insider information. <laughs> Here comes Skittles. Taste the rainbow is here. How you doing, Skittles? Congrats I'm on the win. I'm not doing too bad. Thanks, man. Yeah, congratulations on the win, Skittles. Congrats, man. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you. So, uh, we noticed in the very last play there from Mata, he had lethal, and he misplayed playing the Zilliax, missing the ping for lethal. How does this make you feel? What do you think about that? Uh, I feel really bad for the guy because, like, I know how it is when you're just so zoned in on one play, and he was just worried about not dying, right? Because he knew that he, yeah, I had the weapon to kill him. He just was trying to figure out his best possible way to live, where he's not even looking at the possible line of killing me, right? Yeah. So I just, I just know that. Like, I've been in that situation, too, and then I play it out and then finally do all the attacks, and I'm like, wait a minute, I could have just killed him, and then I wouldn't have had to worry about it. Yeah. But yeah, to lose the very next play is, is especially rough. So it, it definitely took me a minute to figure out how to actually kill him, too, because I was trying to remember if the Risky Skipper um, Bloodsworn had both Risky Skippers go off or just the one. And I couldn't remember. I was pretty sure it was both, but then I figured out a different play that worked anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah. 
Was there um, any uh, any favorite moments in in the matches you played, or nervous moments? Uh, not drawing risky skipper against uh, Paladin was pretty nerve wracking and upsetting, but it it is what it is. And... Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah that that was pretty tough. Yeah, and was... uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, that was, I was just going to say that was a, a pretty good draw for him too into the war. You're having your, your big, um, uh, met, uh, what's it called? Metallic war gear. Guys. Magnetic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in the, the priest matchup, when he dropped the Octasari, were you worried about that at all? Like you had a lot of options going into that. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't worried about it at all because if it came down to him eventually being able to kill it, I had the the silence in hand from Plague of Death to get rid of it anyways. Yeah. And and none of my stuff could kill it, and I knew that he didn't have a way to kill it without damaging it, right? So yeah. it, it, it wasn't really a concern at that point, and my health total was perfectly fine with all those Zilliacs coming down. <laughs> as soon as that oh, yeah. Zilliacs came down, that set the tone right there where... See, Zilliacs. Oh. Yeah, I think you played mass res and resed like a whole ton of Zilliaxes and he yeah. conceded that. Uh, yeah, you get the reborn. Yeah, that was definitely the moment. I, I think if I were playing that, I might have played the Plague of Death there. Guess? I, I might have done that. I, I... <laughs> Sorry, I, I lost you guys after I had talked about the Zilliacs. Yeah, we were just uh, commenting on that Zilliacs play where it, it pretty much stopped him dead. From, yeah. from putting any it damage sure on it after. Yeah. Yeah, he was probably feeling not too bad about having that 810, but luckily yeah. I was able to pull out a time rip to get rid of it. But yeah. Yeah, so that puts us, I think we're pretty much tied on the week now. I, I don't know the exact scores as I'm on my yeah. phone right now, but. Yeah, we, um, we just went over that right before you got in, and uh, it's it's really even. I think there's a one point difference, so the yeah. last match will be the decider. Uh, yeah. I wish you guys the best of luck in that last match. Uh, uh, I, do you I know do offhand who it is? Oh, right. <laughs> it's uh, me and Brick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you, well, uh, if you guys are on stream or not? Uh, no, we are not on stream currently. Ah, uh, darn. Get on stream, base. Come on. Right, yeah, who wants to cast in a four hours? <laughs> four hours? Okay. Five, five hours. That could be done, day. Could be. Maybe. Maybe so. maybe I make a second appearance today. I don't yeah. know what else ends up happening. <laughs> I mean, my days get pretty chaotic. So, any uh, any shout outs you wanted to say to uh, to your to your your fans and your and your uh, teammates there, Skittles? I just wanted to thank my teammates for believing in me. Even though uh, I haven't been doing all that well in pro this week or this year, I should say, season, whatever you want to call it. And uh, big shout out to Dad Legend for kicking our ass and Hero, and uh, we'll see you <laughs> next season. You know, yeah, Hero's been pretty disgusting for myself too. So, oh, there's Skittles. Oh, <laughs> his quick exit stage left. Uh too funny. <laughs> Well, um, I got the bands for the next match. If we want to tackle the uh, the classes there, um, yeah, let's get into it. Oh, he's back! All right, so Ron is banning the hunter. Yep. Oh, wait. Thanks. Oh. Thanks. Thanks for joining us, Skittles. I, I know you disconnected there for a quick sec. So. Yeah. 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 I, I, I didn't have today. time to thank you for coming in. <laughs> Yeah, I was just saying thanks for casting us and taking time out of your guys' day because I know everyone has busy schedules, so we appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yes, I'm very busy. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to birds and trains go by all day. And walking yeah. the squirrels, yep. And I just want to give one more quick shout-out to uh, sure. Ron Mexico, who's going to take down this next match for Fourth and Inches. As you know, that's my team. My, I go. captained that team, so. Uh, yeah, it should be easy 3-0 sweep for Ron. No, no worries there. <laughs> Who's he up against? Nate? Uh, yeah. Nate, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it'll be easy. That's, that's the stubs, right? Y'all going to crush them. I don't yeah. know what y'all worry about. 
Yeah. All, All right, right. Well, thanks, thanks guys. See you later. Take care. I bet. I, I bet I can already predict Ron's lineup. Not that he told me what it is last night or anything. <laughs> yeah, you guys never <laughs> planned or anything, right? Yeah, no. I mean, it's not like I'm on the team or anything. I don't know. Are right. you helping our enemy? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> no. Look, but, but... you can't you can't blame me for, for, for chatting at my best bud. All right? Okay. All right. Well, just know that uh, we will see fourth and inches in the finals. You know, they're on the opposite side of the bracket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Predicted actually to uh, to kind of roll through and get to the finals, so yeah, they're doing the dad legend thing where they just kind of seem unstoppable, huh? Mm -hmm. So we get so we already went through bands, right? So um, Ron's band did we? Yeah, Ron's band Hunter as AKA Sage, and Nate has banned Druid. Hey, I guess you'd call me the Ron Mexico honor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So both players are ready right now, so I'm just going to let them know that they can start. And uh, looks like it's... If you guys happen to notice any mismatches in, in their current classes right now, we're not going to know what the archetype is, but... Uh, at a quick glance, I would give uh, Ron Mexico the, the favored getting to uh, both have... Um, mage and rogue into that lineup um, without the, uh, the, uh, the druid on the other side. Um, the hunter might be one of the harder ones to win with, but uh, yeah, it should be a good. Cool. Um, so we're going to be spectating Nate first, and then Ron Mexico is going to be on the top. Um, just gonna be oh, well, then I'll do it backwards, just because <laughs> I'm going to be different. You're on the Ron Mexico side, so. Yeah, I am. I have no bias at all. <laughs> nope. Uh, so with that, it's going to be Conquest rules similar to Pro Series that we just went through just a few minutes ago. And players are joining. Oh, come on. My friends list is so glitchy. You asked for it took me three tries to get into the spectate. Yeah, spectate's been pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Oh my god. I don't have. Can somebody post Nate's uh, battle tag real quick? <laughs> yeah, I got you. I'll send it over uh, Discord. It's, it's pretty easy. It's Nate uh, 1312. So, um, we got a just stellar hand from Ron Mexico that I'm probably considering I keep. No mulligan? Oh, actually, no. The uh, I think I can already see the mulligan. So uh, he got Zephyrus off of his mulligan after keeping Reno and uh, Bone Wraith. Or picked up so, the Bone Wraith on the mulligan as well. After playing... Oh, wow. That's really nice. Uh, he maybe plays Zeph into Wild Growth. And uh, I can't really comment on Nate's hand because I can't see it. So Nate's just got an Awaken, Scion, Town Crier, Bomb, Bomb Wrangler, and the coin. That's his current hand right now. Yeah, it's uh, really strong hands for both these players. Um, so really interesting to see how these uh, develop down the line. Ron Mecco going to go with the Zephyrus? <laughs> oh, is he? I didn't think he was going to. Yeah, so. probably. Uh, just, you, know, you don't have a turn three, so... Yeah. Right wing, wild growth. Okay. <clears throat> How was it? Nate, 12, 13? 13, 13, 12. 13, 12. Well, I added him. So, waiting on him to accept. So Nate's currently got Scion, Bomb Wrangler, uh, two shields, and a Devoted Maniac. 
So a full suite of invokes, but no Galakrug yet. But i um, going to be able to develop the Bomb Wrangler to an empty turn of the Wild Growth on the other side. Uh, but from there, it's uh, going to start getting really dicey for uh, Nate with uh, the hand of all the Highlander payoffs and a turn five to curve into off this Wild Growth mm -hmm. off the top. Wow. Yeah, Wild Growth yeah. into an empty board is exactly what you want here in Mexico. Uh, and you get the Malios on five with the activator in hand. That's that's a really good deal. Nate just picked up uh, the acolyte, the pain. He doesn't really have much to play. So that bomb wrangler looks well. This is a very slow start for Nate, which is not what you want to do into a mage because you're just playing. You're just playing into their game plan. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of like the acolyte, um, probably because at this point. Uh, year on a draw, Galakrond, or die. Uh, but I'm gonna limit it to one draw with the, the Frostbolt. <clears throat> Alright, hasn't, hasn't um, activated anything just yet. So... And so we're gonna see a turn 6 Reno, probably, onto even an empty board just to get the tempo on, out there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely better. It's definitely better to remove stuff, and I imagine Nate is going to play something. But the tempo is really king in this matchup, so I think you just want it either way. And uh, it'll also allow Ron to go more easily into a turn 7 Lumos, uh as he'll have tempo, so he won't be dropping too much tempo by playing it. And he wants to play Lunas on 7 every time. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. we might see the arcane breath here instead yeah. into a bone wraith. That yeah. is perfectly great. It might even be better. Flame strikes um, not bad. Yes. The AI is probably particularly fit here, especially when you're doing lumens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, considering not uh, swinging face to keep battle rage inactive, I like. Yes. Yeah, I think he just passes. Here. <laughs> it just seems so backwards not to. Oh, he's gonna go for it anyway. But yeah, I think he's getting to the point where he wants to start applying pressure. So he's gonna have to win somehow. I'm hitting faces the way. This is the way. This, this is the way. <laughs> yeah, there's not really a, a good way to set up um, and and apply any pressure going into turn seven, which is uh, really what you want to do. Um, and I think we're going to see this game start to slip away from Nate, um, just because after this this next turn, uh, every turn is going to apply like a just tremendous pressure. tremendous pressure. Yeah, you know, upwards of could be twenty mana in a turn spent. Yeah, like he's got to cross his fingers and hope that Ron doesn't uh, top deck a Luna's here. Uh, not Luna's Luna. The Star Seeker, or whatever her name is. Yeah, so, it, you know, worst case scenario, you can develop your Reno next turn to win back any board you lost here by playing Lunas. Uh, but uh, uh, we're probably going to see the Arcane Intellect come down and just as many uh, minions as you can play after that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is going to be an uphill battle for me from here on out. He really played this matchup way too slow, I'd say. Uh, that'd be his, my biggest... Uh, great. Uh, great. I want to say criticism with okay. his uh, gameplay. Yeah, his hand didn't uh, really uh, afford him any chances to, to apply early pressure, so... Um, he did make a couple choices, like the Acolyte instead of... Uh, the Bomb Wrangler, but um, you really want to try and draw some more cards and apply pressure right off the bat. I mean, he did have Town Fire on one, I suppose. I mean, Reno is perfectly good here. This might be the best Reno thing you can get. Yeah, these are the two biggest minions in the deck uh, pre galakron so this will just clean up the board. Uh, keep him ahead and uh, just do a little chip damage here.
And so if we're Ron here, we're probably going to drop Alex next turn, regardless of what we top deck, almost. Uh, maybe the only consideration we made outside of that would be, say, Luna herself making an appearance. Yeah. Um, you could also consider that you want to um, want to ping and, and clean up the board nicer, but you're probably fine just uh, using your minions to clear and, and play an Alex. Yeah. I think you just want to make your really powerful turns as fast as you can because the warrior has absolutely no recourse once you what go now? wide and tall. Yeah, um, I feel like just uh, dropping the battle rage out of my hand. Uh, I don't think I'm going to find time to play both of them for a lot of value. So uh, the other option is uh, gaining a little bit of health, but I think you're just going to be looking at getting overwhelmed if you're uh, just trying to keep Life up on and health. The big old wealth. Yeah. Uh, you know, nice large dragons to keep up pressure and make it difficult to get any kind of clear with the risky skipper. Uh, and we see a lot of refill on the other side with that conjurer's pickup. Um, still having the, uh, the uh, arcane intellect to go with it. Um, and uh, you're just not going to be clearing off enough of the board with this draw here, um, no matter what you get. The Scion. <laughs> Ouch. Does he have lethal on board right now? Let's see. Yeah. 12, 14, 18, 23. That's not lethal, but he could play Calicos into any, pretty much any, uh, any burst would be lethal. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you you need to go for that, though. You might still just drop off the Caligos. Um, yeah, I mean, you, yeah. you can get something else that's good off the Caligos for sure. Yeah, uh, or you can uh, draw Alex, and that ends and just the game win. there. <laughs> I was just going to say, Alex comes out to play, and... Yep. So that was game one. Uh, Unfortunately for Nate, he didn't draw the cards he needed when he needed them, and it was a little bit one-sided because of that. Yep, it was a late, late start for, for Warrior to get going, um, and then Mage was just... Would somebody uh, please ask Nate to add me? Okay, do you want to... Accept my friend request. I didn't want to do it in the middle of Ask you guys to ask None can yeah, they jumped right back into it, and now it's a rope mirror. We see the very important boom pistol bullet in Ron Mexico's hand, which uh, begs the question if you keep it, and I'm not sure you do if you don't have anything else to keep alongside it. Um, you know, you don't want to end up with a hand, you can't play anything until turn. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. All right. Now I can see Nate's hand. Uh, the flick is probably a decent keep here. Uh, you can flick a faceless, although he doesn't keep it. Well, yeah. I think it's a little too expensive, but um, yeah, there are matchups where you're con you're considering it. Like a, a druid is one of the ones where if you flick either um, uh, Oasis Surger or the Wing Guardian is the way you win those those two matchups yeah. respectively. Uh, Ron's developing a nice little curve here. He can go coin, double three drop, or just dagger is always fine on two. Um, but uh, the backstab and the evil miscreant in hand is going to really, uh, really help out uh, Nate here uh, get back in this game, especially with that togwaggle pickup. Uh, really, the way you win most of your matchups is with togwaggle or galacron. Mm -hmm. I've seen people use the backstab on, on the Pharaoh Cat. And uh, I don't know if that's the best move. Uh, I, save it. So I want to save it as a combo activator oh, here. Um, in that position, if I didn't have a an activator, I'm oh, probably going to swing with my weapon. Uh, just to uh, clear it over to your turns. Oh, <laughs> no, no Believe in wing. yourself. Believe in yourself, Rob. Take that thing. I, Come on, man. The, the death wing is the not believing in yourself option. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Oh, no, I'm going to need to death <laughs> Deathwing has won me some matchups. Like that oh, oh, absolutely. 
That's the uh, uh, poker chip all in deal. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's saying I need an an uh an O. We can't swear on this, can we? Shit's fun. Shit's a good word. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, here we're probably gonna see uh the candle taker. I don't really see much other play that yeah, Ron has to make here. He's just going to try to keep tempo on the board for himself. Keep trying to see. So many options. Yeah, pretty clean. Uh, go into your next evoke. Um, you are uh, only yeah. one invoke in hand off of having the full Galcon, and Galcon on seven is uh, what feels like unstoppable a lot of the time. <clears throat> see the fate coming in to play? Nope. I kind of like developing uh, a number of minions so you can curve into your your faceless corruptor over the seal fate. Um, you know, yeah. Rogue doesn't have a ton of ways to answer. Um, you know, you do want to be able to uh, keep uh, a lackey in hand. Seal fate still gives uh, a number of options. I mean, you would pull through the board hmm. with that and the dagger and still have a, a curve into a faceless. I think that's perfectly fine. Yeah. The, the other thing you want to consider is maybe you want to leave a, an extra lackey up, so that way you have both uh, the option to drop High Sparon Togwaggle on 6 and um, and on 7. Um, That's true. It's not looking super good for Ron here, I think. He probably just maniacs and trades into the cat, possibly. I think uh, if that rush lackey hadn't gotten buffed, then it would have been better for him to just trade into that to keep the lackeys on. So many options. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's not quite the way it's going. No, unfortunately. Not. So if you're Ron here, you're probably a little bit worried that you're losing more. Oh, yeah, that um, is a pretty good pickup off of that maniac. Yeah, and uh, Ron's gonna go ahead and shadow step to guarantee a full Galakron, hopefully on um, on seven, which uh, could really uh, end the game. I mean, honestly, it might be a turn six Galakron we see. Probably. It just depends on how much uh, how much Nate extends here. I keep Getting uh, yeah, I think like there's no real punish to extending into uh, further onto the board against Rogue. Oh, yeah, you're, you're probably going to develop the most tempo here. Probably a swing with everything and then faceless off your uh, your cobalt. Yeah. Miss Grant, that's its name. So you, so you want to go Galakrond on six, right? Like that's uh, going to make it really tough to come back. You probably want to prevent the Togwaggle so you don't have to deal with their zero cost on the other side. So maybe you seal fate. Oh, he is choosing not to seal fate. He's going to go ahead and kill him. Yeah, I was kind of looking at this thinking that he probably wants to try to come back on the board a bit. It is quite a bit of damage you'd be taking the other way. Um, especially, it looks like Ra or Nate is running quite a damage-heavy build with that life drinker. Yeah, he's got a lot of burst in that. Yeah, the uh, the burst package uh, in the, the flex spots kind of fell out of favor, but it still has um, quite a bit of merit. Uh, there's, uh, you know... A lot of decks that don't deal with face damage very well, uh, particularly mage, so that could be the thinking in this build was to uh, really improve that mage map. It looks like he's going to want to try and push um, a decent amount of damage face here with that buff. Yeah. 
And if you're wrong, I think all, all you're really worried about is just losing the game at this point. And I yeah, I really like the evasive jackanoid here. And that's what he chooses to go with. Probably uh, just push another 7 damage face, uh, make them react. But we're going to see probably a um, couple of invokes here, uh, a lackey, and uh, set up for your Galifond on. Interesting. Is that a, a bad yeah. Um, yeah. The Battle of Albatross pickup is quite interesting. So, I think Nate had brought a mage, and uh, Ron and I had talked a lot about just shoving birds at mages' butts. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> This this makes the Galakrom turn I think as uh, as clean as possible. Uh, it's unfortunate that he'll burn a card, but he should be okay. Yeah, he's probably hoping to pick up a backstab. Uh, not have to burn. If he does, if he does, that'd be pretty good. He did not. I think he would have liked to have drawn that for three. Ooh. That hurts. The flick is good, though. Burning a backstab is okay. Yeah, not, not he's too. not worried about burning that at all. Yeah. Um, I think there's a consideration to just flick off the uh, the tog waggle. Um, it does and, kill uh, his own, though. I think that's the main yeah, problem. You're probably not too worried about it. You're, uh, you know, going to be putting a lot of pressure. You win the board right here um, with the Leroy and the Eviscerate in hand, especially. You're probably looking to just uh, maybe close up the game next turn. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's ten damage. He's got six on board. If he can find uh, a damage lackey or anything, then that really just seals the deal. A decent wand pickup, gonna let him uh, help clean up the board, uh, generate some lackeys, uh, and still put down the shield of Gal Galakron to put something in the way of, uh, of Ron. Is he going to play the shield, though? <clears throat> A little bit of a nasty card with the uh, generous moment hit. Hello, birds. Ron, I, I just I just want to see you show that right right off the track. That's all I want, my, just to see Ron show birds. <laughs> He could consider sapping the shield, but he doesn't have enough burst to get lethal just yet. He, even with the sap, he would be off quite a bit. No, I think this he might probably be, just uh... wants to develop a nice white bird and probably shove the bird. If I were him, I'd probably just shove the bird. I think he might want to set up his own uh, shield. Um, probably just clean up the shield on the other side with the, uh, the weapon. Maybe develop both the bird and the shield here. But looks like he is going to go for the bird and get some lackeys. Maybe looking for a, a rush lackey to clean this up or even just taunt up on his side. Prevent some damage uh, coming the other way because you're pretty low. You're at risk of the, of a burst lethal. So uh, might be looking to just taunt up this, uh, this uh, what's the word? Miss Grant here. If you can just have one damage deck, just one, and that's GG. So. All right, Ron. Evasive. Uh... I'm, I'm, ner I'm nervous for you, buddy. <laughs> Evasive yeah, you're Draconoid? probably thinking evasive, um, but maybe not. Uh, you did just see a weapon swing go into your face, so you might be a little afraid of that. Maybe you, uh, the other consideration is just evolving the, uh, 
the generous money. Twin Tyrant? I wonder what that would do right now. I think he might take twin and play it. Yep. And that uh oh. has the possibility of cleaning the board. Yeah, you can go um, this backstab, kobold, and shadow step it alongside your evasive dragon to to uh, clean up the board and give yourself a big taunt, threaten a lot of damage going the other way. Chooses to leave the lackeys alive. They're not really at risk of, you know, ripping uh, the tog waggle down. So we got Sap. Is he at Sap up there? Yeah. Well, Unfortunately, Sap oh. cannot hit the. Uh... Right, that's right. Yep, forgot all about that. Yeah. No, it's well, actually, Nancy could give you something interesting. <clears throat> Maybe you play that and get a. Cobalt could give. Uh, or, yeah, Link Fox for one is always good. Yeah, it looks like it might have to be the Leroy to come out and uh, take it down, clean up a little bit of the board. Um, but there's six damage in hand for Nate right now. So, a um, little scary for, uh, for Ron. Conka is not quite what you wanted there. Yeah, I like uh, ignoring the board, just going face. Uh, you know you're dead if you're dead. The one, the one uh, damage your way is uh, definitely going to go a little bit further in uh, in ending the game. For Oh man, this has gotten hurry in a hurry. I don't. I. I. I that scorcher feels so bad. Yeah, it just burns your whole board off. So. Uh, it really does. I'm not sure how how Ron wins from here. He doesn't have Togwaggle to, like, just be a big dirty lucker. Maybe that Deathwing was the uh, the option because at this point you can just drop I, the I, Deathwing and I told cross you, your man. fingers. I told you. <laughs> I, I really like this play. I set up the biggest amount of uh, tempo for them to deal with the largest board you can. Um, the Boom Pistol Bully is interesting, though, if you can clean up something alongside it. Um, you haven't seen a sap on the other side, so you're not really feeling comfortable about going your uh, Boom Pistol and your Shield of Galakron, so... Um, gonna be a tough turn for Ron. You might have to just say you don't have it and, uh, and play it alongside. He's going to clear out as much as he can here. Head crack. <laughs> Don't do it wrong. Yeah, I think it's probably another wax of Nancy. Um, yeah. yeah. Just clean up the board here. Probably ping off the kobold preventing shadow stitch shenanigans. Well, he's holding on to this one, this dude. Ooh. Yeah, I think right here you can develop your cronks pretty safely. Clean up the board and. Uh, you know, set up the Galakron next turn, which will almost certainly end the game. Hmm. I wonder. And some Kronks come out, and a Maniac. That still allows him to clear up the board. Yeah, it's not a full clear, but you leave a 1-1 one -one up on the other side, you're not too, uh, not too worried about that one. And from Ron, we don't see a whole lot of options here. I think he may be Alex is his own face. He could cronk, uh, sap the Kronks, which feels bad for sure. So you probably want to sap and drop the Boom Pistol Bully and uh, develop anything else you can alongside it. Yeah. Um, you know, so. make it so that they can't play their Galakron. What 
Uh, the other consideration is maybe just Anka and the sap, or and the, or no, not that. Yeah, you still you have to sap. You can't just play the Anka. Probably looking for something three mana to play alongside the sap and the bully, but um, not going to find it. Probably going to take the former champ. It's the most tempo you can get. Or the uh, sandbinder. What elemental? Oh, possibly a sea mat? In Anixia? Yeah, Nixie has the widest board you can you can play. Acceptably. I would have loved to have seen the Nostormu come down for the for the memes. <laughs> You're really disappointing me, Ron. He's, he's trying to win the game. What's he trying to do? Hmm, I wonder. Trying to win, you just said that. Yeah, yeah. You play. Oh, I'm all out of beer. So I think if you're Ron, you're kind of hoping to top deck a Shadow Step. I think he's already played one. I, I forget if he's played both. Yeah, he's Speed. played one. Yeah, Ron's played one. And I'm pretty sure Nate's, this is his first sap? Yeah, uh, yeah. he's played one other sap, okay. I believe. Um, I think... The, or maybe this is the first half. Um, you're probably looking to get your cronks off the top here if you're you're wrong. Um, it's taking a long time to really think about this. That's, I'm not sure if I like that. Uh, hmm. Oh man, that's eight damage. He's so close. Yeah. Um, if there is a CMAT in the hand, you might be looking at. Just drawing the CM at and rushing out a taunt. I think he probably presses the button and hopes to get a damage. A shoot lackey. Could still roll um, the uh, the the rush. Oh, you don't have a three mana or three damage rush at that slot. That's not Just gonna go ahead and develop the most amount of uh, amount of tempo that you can. So maybe, maybe, big maybe. Your composure is the Galakrond doesn't win on the spot. Yeah, he is two damage off and drew the other life drinker, so would have to draw the final eviscerate or Leroy. Uh, could possibly also be playing SIs um, to end this game. I wonder. Well, he's got to empty some of his hand out before he can play it. Probably looking at just Kobold lacking <laughs> the face and uh, sapping the Anka and then dropping your, your Galakron. Or, or playing it safer and clearing off the bullies. Probably. Probably the, the safer. All right, let's see what he gets. He gets the Maniac. He gets the Flick. Still fate. And an Albatross. That went pretty well for Ron. Uh, the Flick. Yeah, it's gonna does... look at the board. The Flick does present some problems. Uh, fortunately for Ron, it's looking like he's just gonna be dead next turn unless the Alex is taking phase. Quick picks by Nate. Racing the, uh, the rope. Maybe a cartoon defender off the Pharaoh Cat keeps you alive a little bit longer, but the uh, Kronks in hand is guaranteeing that you can go over the top and end this game. So I think that this is just going to be. Yeah, that eight. looks like that ties a. Uh... Wrap things up in this one. From nothing. Oh, 
Ron just looking for outs. Yeah, Ron's got to do his due diligence to see if there's, you know, some some outside path that lets him uh, both heal, develop, and. Uh, oh man, that eviscerates like a turn earlier would have been it. <laughs> eviscerates his base. There you go. He found a lethal. Yep, he found lethal. Ron, always the honorable opponent, and it's honorable to the uh, to Yep. So now it's uh, what is that? One, one, two? One, one? one, one. Oh, wow. <laughs> I thought we'd played three matches at this point. <laughs> yep, she's a drawn out battle, but it's, it's been a great series so far. Oh, yeah. All right, cooking up some popcorn. And, uh... Getting into this game three, where it's Hunter versus Druid. Uh, Ron, I believe, brought West Hunter. No. Is this Highlander? This looks Highlander, like Highlander. By the looks of it, yeah. yeah, it looks like Highlander. I really like the, the beta just, arrow making it back in. He was messing with me last night. He said he's making West. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like uh, Nate's picked up the uh, Embiggen Druid, so... What do you keep for your Nate? What do you keep? Strength and numbers and big and... You, yeah. think you, you uh, keep all the spells. The spells just win. Yeah. Yes. The, That's uh, a really nice opening hand from Ron. Oh, yeah. Um, it is going to lean in the favor of the Highlander Hunter. You know, able to keep pressure on a little bit more consistently. But uh, especially with that Embiggen pickup, this is just such a smooth hand. Or the the uh, the Fairy Dragon pickup. Nothing but a bunch of big birds. So now it's just a race. A race before a time comes through. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I really like the coin. But, you know, the board as much as you can. Uh, just you know, stay as even with the hunter for as long as you can. I think this is a, kind of tough for Ron here. Uh, he could tracking and hero power and clear the board. Yeah, I think you want to pick up a dragon here and activate your corrosive breath and just keep uh, keep pressure on. Yeah. What are my favorite animations from from the new set? Oh yeah, especially with like Zentimo, where you just vomit all over the board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so this turn's gonna be uh, setting up for a lot of pressure in the later turns. Oh, he's choosing not to develop the Desert Spear, probably to uh, maintain a better curve next turn. Yeah, he's. I think he's just trying to go a little wide on him, apply as much pressure as possible. Yeah, and here we see a two turn. Very yeah. good. Yeah, this is a. Uh, this is where the uh, the. The druid starts to struggle. If you hadn't embiggened on that first turn, you would have the the Zilliax ready to play. So there's sometimes uh, consideration to just uh, Hold wait till you have a curve before playing it. Yeah, we're... yeah that, I think that's about the most thought that embiggen druid ever puts into their what plays. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is vital. Cause... I mean, he had the the three mana, the three drop. So I think he wasn't too worried about it. Yeah, he had everything but uh, a four and a five. So from here, he's probably looking Let's to just uh, go face. Uh, you really got to hope for the five because you don't want to tank nine to clear off the, the fairy dragon here. Oh, yeah. That's not how you win this matchup. Deathwing. Go Deathwing. Do uh, it. <laughs> Do it. Oh, he's he's a Twilight Dream is going to fill up your curve. Yes. Wrong. But the Deathwing <laughs> is considerable just because you're going to guarantee that if they do get ahead, you have a way to get back. So it is actually worth considering the Deathwing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My there man. Go big or go home. 
Yeah, I liked keeping on pressure. You have the primordial uh, to clear off anything they try and play. I'm going to see the swipe come out, but uh, it's not a very good board to swipe. Yeah, you do clean up the Primordial Explorer so your next card can stick, but uh, you know that's the only thing that's really getting hit. <clears throat> yep. I think we probably see the swipe come out this turn oh, since he has nothing else to do. Yeah. If he doesn't, doesn't do something. <laughs> The big oh yeah, oh yeah! Hit him in the face with that hammer. Come on, run! Believe in yourself. Believe in the hammer. Yeah, yeah. The hammer going face along with the uh, the brand next turn is uh, gonna put some hurt on. But we're gonna see the quest complete and probably either an oasis surger or a big Ziliax to get some help. Oh yeah. Brand next turn. So let's see. Unity, precision. Not the best pull, but okay one. I think we probably see him heal for 15 here, which really sucks for Ron. He could hit with the uh, big old dinosaur into the 5-4. Yeah, no way to do it. Yeah, he'll go ahead and clean up the fairy dragon, uh, but gonna be able to trade off the uh the king and uh keep some pressure on and uh now we got a gap in the turn for ron mexico not uh having uh anything to do before the dragon turn but the deathwing pickup is actually going to be very relevant soon well, that's a good pickup, for sure. It allows him to keep pressure on the face. I think he probably just clears out the 5-3. Yeah, clears off the 5-3, puts a little bit of damage to face. Uh, uh, Wing Guardian likely to come down next turn, but uh, Dragon Queen Alex Straza will present some serious uh, opposition. Oh, yeah. You can Maybe consider he... the Evasive Worm. Yeah, maybe he doesn't win Guardian this turn. Maybe he plays Evasive and Hero Let's Powers to get a little extra health. Yeah, uh, the other option is to, to draw a card, uh, gain another mana. So you're on 10 next turn and also develop the Evasive. I really like the uh, the mana saber inclusion. Makes me think that this could possibly include um, the witching hour because you have the extra beast to hit that you don't mind coming back because it's just giving you mana. Oh wow, that uh deathwing pickup is pretty good. Uh, it's a little awkward at this current moment, but it is a nice option. So you don't absolutely have to deathwing if you fall behind. Yeah. He's going to look to take a little more face damage. I don't think he's too worried about taking a whole ton of face damage here. He just wants to push face to as many as he can. We're going to see yeah. this other evasive here. It doesn't quite clean up the Alex like he'd like it to. And it also dies to the eggs pretty well. <clears throat> Yeah, this is the point where it gets uh, kind of obnoxious to be playing the Ambigu Druid. Uh, you've, you're really out of play, multiple plays to make. You can choose what big thing do you drop this turn. All right. see those eggs come online. The Unleash is a really great pickup here. I think he can uh, send he, he can send a, a fair amount of stuff into the face and survive. Yeah, I think the consideration right now is what are you going to trade off? Uh, you know, both your rushes, oh, one or two of your rushes are likely dying here, but the, uh, it's probably better to keep the uh, 
nine total instead of the single eight eight on uh, board, even though you're pushing a little less damage face here. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting really close. Yeah, there's only one taunt left in the hand for uh, for Nate, and you're not clearing anything off while you play it. So I uh, could start to uh, worry. Is that actually lethal coming back the other I think so. I was just trying to see what other outs were there. And... A 10-6 or 6-10 does not... See. Doesn't make you feel good slapping that down, not doing anything. No, he'll be too off uh, the current trades, but you know, picking up like a rot nest just ends the game at any point here. So maybe you trade off your whole board. You drop your 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 zero mana deathwing and a bone wraith to uh, present the biggest amount of stuff here. Yeah. You're still pushing five face, putting them down to four. Now you have a 12 mm -hmm. attack to clear off anything that they try and play. Um, you're a little worried about another wing guardian, but uh, you, you're you always going to be worried about a little another wing guardian. Um, and at the end of the day, you've got second death wing to really shore up uh, any taunts. Just get them out of the way. Yeah. I think if, if you're if you're Nate here, you're pretty worried about uh, losing every turn. Okay, oh, wow. choosing to go face. He's got the bone right, and he's not dead to swipe. So uh, choosing to hold back the. Uh... Was that it? No, that's not it. Here's on the blood. Oh my god, this is so close. Yeah, uh, I actually really like this a lot better than what I was saying because now you can yeah. uh, clean up the board and then uh, go face with uh, your weapon and your uh, hero power to guarantee yeah. even through it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, as long as you're above four, then you're not dead to swipe, so. Yeah, you're worried about Leroy too, but not with the Bone Wraith. I can't win them all. Mm -hmm. And that's GG for uh, Nate. So now we're going on to game. Four, four yeah. right? Four. So oh we're God. probably gonna see the druid again uh, against the rogue from Nate, or from from Ron. Lunara versus Valera. And uh, indeed we are. All right, so. And he's got the albatross. He's got the bird, man. Just shove the bird. Shove it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's underrated how effective the bird is against Druid because you're so dependent on just drawing a bomb every turn that if you draw a bird, um, you are likely to just kind of fizzle out and uh, lose the game right there. Yep. Decep deceptively disruptive. Yeah. That's the word. Bird is the word. Sir, you are Job's correct. Done. Yeah. All right, a cat on one is always good to see. That makes two games that he's drawn it on one. Very, very well done, Ron. Let me see uh, the dragon come out on two, and just good curves on both sides. Ooh, if you're a mate, you really want to get this quest out. Probably slow your game plan for that. Yeah, you have uh, just enough to complete it in your hand, so you can kind of curve nicely with Scale Rider, Fairy Dragon, Hero Power, into Oasis Surger. Uh, get it done in uh, three turns, exactly. All right, and if you're wrong here, I think you're considering going as wide as you can as soon as you can. Yeah, uh, this is also fine. Uh, hopefully set up for a, a um, an Edwin turn next turn. Oh, yeah. 
easiest and big and ever. Job done. Yeah, he's curving out nicely, so there's no fear to in big and now. Yeah, you could consider just dropping a bird uh, right here, especially after the uh, the strength and numbers uh, getting ready to go off. Because if that pulls the one one. <laughs> Ooh, second and big and now it's starting to look a little hairy. <clears throat> you probably yeah. see a wild the dragon and uh, a hero power, I would say. Yeah, you really have uh, put yourself in a must. Um, must activate this quest as quickly as possible, but he's choosing not to. Uh, this really is going to open the game up for Ron to uh, to put some damage in here early, and, and if he can, you know, just find a way through a couple taunts, win the game. And I think if you're Ron here, you probably want to try to get a big fat Edwin out as soon as you can. Yeah, this this eight eight Edwin is going to start going to face very quickly. Um, You've got some uh, some rush removal in your hand. You've got the eviscerate to try and end the game quickly. Um, you know that oh, drawn oasis surger isn't coming down for a few turns. I think you're Nate. You're probably going oasis, clear the end one, and uh, just well, he can't even clear it. I forget you have no. the in the way. Yeah, the, uh, the that Zilliax is is gonna come in and do a good amount of work, keeping that Edwin alive and. Uh, Setting up with, especially with another eviscerate off the top, he could just, you know, end up going over the top after a couple more connections with the Sedlin. Oh yeah. Yeah. The uh, the quest is going to complete next turn, so we'll see what that pulls. Um, a bird uh, might end the game, and uh, you know, a, a wing guardian might end the game. So really up to the there's a, <laughs> his own bed. There's his own bird. As one big bird. I don't think you necessarily wanted to see that. Yeah, it is something you can play right now. Um, I think you do. It's just such a big bird. Oh my god. Yeah, that might uh, end the game if there's oh. no flick off the top. Now that that is a tough spot to be in if you're wrong. Well no flick. That just might be GG. Yeah, this uh, is uh, why people play the Ambigan Druid. Is sometimes it just high rolls like this. Yep. Uh, strength in numbers is possibly one of the most powerful cards in standard right now. Uh, you know, especially when you can combine it with Ambigan and Wing Guardian. Mm hmm. I remember, uh, what was it, reading a while back, uh, I believe that I had said that, that the deck should be called Strength in Numbers Druid and not in Biggin because of the card. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, the the win rate on uh, Strength in Numbers is insane. And Ron is just going to go ahead and bump the, uh, the Edwin. But... I think Nate is just going to keep applying so much temper and pressure that the community is going He's almost dead already. Yeah, that was some big lumpy minions just smacking face there. Yeah. Big lumpy minions, yep. And so I think we're going to see a concede from Ron here because there is really. Oh, man. Nothing He's going hard. We're all over. Oh. He's always got his swing to end the game, so I don't think he's going to concede. I think we'll see a nice uh, self in it. He's John Cena. Nope. <laughs> uh, self sacrifice again. Alright, so game five coming up. Uh, Ron still has his rogue. Yeah. Nate has. Warrior. Rogue vs. Warrior. This is looking a little grim for Ron. If it's Galakrond Warrior, that is a favorable matchup for Nate. Yeah. 
Valera. Watch. I mean, it's possible. It's Some, there's a small hint it's a Galacron. Small hint. Yeah. Yeah. Slight. It's not that we see it in the hand or anything. No, not yeah, the second I... card on the right. Left, sorry. My bad. Third card I... on the right. <laughs> uh, anyway, go ahead, base. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, um, so the Boom Pistol Bully in the hand is uh, going to be huge for Ron in this matchup. The matchup is almost a dead even 50 50, but uh, with the Boom Pistol Bully. And the tossing Galacron by Nate, uh, this is going to be a really interesting match. I don't think it's strictly correct to keep Galacron as warrior, especially when you're looking to get tempo early. I'll show you who's boss. And we're going to see a, a dog waggle coming in off the top here, but maybe a couple turns before we can play that. Probably just take a bunch of damage trying to kill this sticker because that's gonna do a lot of work in keeping the board clear from Rom's side. Yeah, you, you know, also any minion that you play is gonna help <laughs> clear the risky skipper, so you're kind of in a tough spot. Probably just gonna see the weapon uh, swing and go fade. I wouldn't have been really, uh, I, I might have played the armor smith. If I were him, but I, I I do like the weapon a lot. It helps you to start working the health total down for Ron. Uh, that skipper has got to go because it just prevents your lackeys from sticking at all, and that's really what you need in this matchup. Yeah, uh, a quick uh, life total lead for uh, for Nate here, but you know, might see. Uh, a trade and uh, the Devoted Maniac come down, clear the board, or even just the Corcron, set up something that can uh, deal more damage on the next turn and uh, have a Devoted Maniac for the uh, uh, for the next, for turn following. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I definitely would want to uh, keep the board presence. But anything he plays is going to go down to the miscreant. This is a tough turn for Nate. I think committing that stupid early might have been the best. Yeah, it's um, it's rare that the the skipper on one is the play. It's definitely like your combo piece that you want to be looking to uh, make a lot of things happen with. Uh, you know, big. Uh, battle rage turns, uh, big board clears, big armor gains. Uh, not really a, a true one pot unless you're going to follow it up with the coin into one of your threes that like to get damaged. Yeah, like the bomb wrangler. It's definitely really good if you follow it up with that. Yeah, uh, and this goblin lackey is going to let him clean up the uh, armor smith really nicely and uh, develop a, a sizable board here. Yep, and uh, we'll probably just see uh, the clear come out on Nate's side with the Maniac and uh, face smash into the 3-2. Yeah, um, the the Shield Gralacron is pretty nice. Uh, there's uh, some heavier cards in Ron's hand, but uh, a lot of them uh, tend to stick around and uh, really uh, let you swing the game back. You know, if you can go... Uh, the shield of Galcron on five, uh, choosing to uh, why, use board and uh, just go trade. face. I think you shield here every time and hope that it keeps your lackey alive. Going to turn six, you get called like a long curve. Yeah. And this yeah. this could be the turning point for Ron here. If if Nate can't kill this lackey, then he gets that hog waggle on curve and goes straight into turn seven with a wand and just like snowballs from there. But we do yeah. see the Scion pick up. And yeah, Sion, Sion is going to let him clear it up. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, yeah, he had the town car in hand, so maybe that's why he wasn't worried about, uh, you know, losing board. Uh, but you know, a lot of people think that the Galcrond uh, warriors just a uh, a face deck, but it's it's really a, just a big combo deck. You run so much draw and. Uh, Ron's probably going to look to set up just a massive, massive Edwin here. Um, 
but we're gonna see it probably get cleared off by the in hand Scion. Oh man, that's Edwin is gonna be big. Yeah, it's a uh, going think, to be a ten ten. I think you betray betrayal here, right? I mean why not? Um yeah. You can betrayal and then uh use your face and you're guaranteed it to stick, where now the scion with the uh yeah, the, my, uh, one two is gonna be able to clear it up. My only gripe with that is that uh the uh the lackey is going to get cleared for sure, and now he has no other way to generate a lackey. Uh, he could. Uh, you know, Nate's been pretty consistent with going face, so I wouldn't be too surprised to see a weapon swing go face alongside this. I think he, if I'm Nate, I'm probably worried about this Edwin. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to clear off the Edwin, and then either the weapon will take out the, the, the lackey or the, just go face, and... Uh, from from what he's played before, I'm assuming it's going to go face, but the, the play is definitely to clear off the lackey because the wand is really one of the only ways you're going to lose this. Well, he's definitely thinking about it. Yeah, he is also considering face tanking uh, the 10, which is uh, possibly correct, yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly think it is. He, he has a pretty healthy health for this. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Um, and now it's getting a little awkward for uh, for Ron. Not a really clean turn. Maybe you just drop the uh, the Kronks and set up for a Galakron for two uh, next turn and hope that's enough. So many yep. options. You are too late. His return is nigh. How many books is he? Two. Get home books in hand. He's running a little bit light on invokes in this match so far. Yeah, with that uh, inner rage pickup, he now has the uh, two pieces of, of the burst combo. And uh, this devoted maniac pickup will let him clean up the board, push uh, three face if he wants, or he can use shield of Galakron to develop and uh, clear face with his face. Uh, Choosing to get the taunt down. Uh, I might even just be going face and ignoring this. Wow. Yeah, I think he's in a pretty good position to just start ignoring the board at this point. Dark in the skies, rains. And he's just going to go for it. Alright, yeah. so we see a maniac and a cat. Oh, kitty cat. He can taunt up his Kronks, which is definitely good. Yeah, that's a big lackey pickup here. Uh, probably going to clear off 3 2, taunt up the uh, Korkron, and uh, be in a decent spot. Uh, could potentially go uh, Tog and the Wand next turn. Um, there's no way for. Uh, for Nate to get through this, and he might have to interage either an acolyte or the uh, lack. Yep. I wonder. Oh man, this is tough. Uh, I think if I were him, I'd probably go with the maniac, and we'll start with the acolyte and interage it and see what you get. But I think you probably. Gonna end up doing the maniac and having to clear out the crocs that way, and that allows you to kill the lackey at the very least. So, I, I'm not sure if you can afford to face tank any more damage, um, but you may. Yeah, you probably need to draw. Um, I kind of like the corkron clearing off the uh, the crocs just to avoid taking any more damage to your face. Oh man. That was the combo right there, but he had to use the inner rage to draw, so... Yeah, he's choosing to, to take it and go down to 15, which means that there's Leroy and shenanigans in this game. He didn't kill the lackey. That very no. cool was... He chose to clear off the, the cat for, for some reason. I think he was just playing quickly. Yeah, rushed. He saw more stats on the cat. Yeah. Alright. 
so we see. Ooh, that's a good pickup. Yeah, the, the, the bully is a huge pickup. Now, you can... yeah. I think this this possibly spells doom for uh for Nate. Nate. Yeah. yeah. There's there's not really anything that can uh, change the tide of the game that it isn't a battle cry here. God, that's ugly. Oh my looking. god. <laughs> Wow, well, that's, that's really gotta hurt. So you're kind of forced to just clear off the board. So uh, we're probably gonna see uh, a swing in with the acolyte, see what you draw, and then Corcon finish it off and gain a little bit. Of yeah, probably. Uh, if if Ron picks up a shadow step, I think he's already used one. Has he used both? I know he's used one. Just a single one. Okay, well if he picks up a Shadow Step, then he has lethal with the 5-5. Five five, at the very least. Yeah, he's got he's got the, the Leroy in hand, so really just an Eviscerate pickup will also end this game. Well, I think he probably yeah, armor up, up, so he needs true. the Shadow Step. Yeah, that's right. Forgot about the hero power. It's not an Eviscerate, so... I think we see the Seal Fate come in and kill the 2-3. And then yeah. a Spell Lackey could Maybe do even it. Maybe just a Sap it. here. Yeah, I like the Sap. You prevent uh, a bomb from ruining your day. Um, maybe make a few just Lackeys. go wide, I guess. Yeah. Still holding make on to Make a few Lackeys right? go wide. Yeah. Yeah. You could also consider just going Leroy Phantom Knives uh, to develop a threatening board here. Yeah, that's definitely a play. All right. You've seen one Risky Skipper, so you're not terribly worried about a Risky Skipper combo uh, ruining that. But you can see Galakron probably right here. If there's a zero, then uh, it wouldn't be zero. Sorry, is that zero? Yeah, Jeez, I'm looking I'm for the the hope might have been a, a risky skipper and then some one drops to clear off the Leroy, but uh, this just looks like that's uh, gonna wrap it up here. Wow, quite the turnaround. So yeah, this is this is where the the playing um, the Galakrond warrior as a strictly a face deck kind of comes to bite you in the butt because you you instead you traded off your board to push damage with your your weapon charges because it was more damage but you lost you know overall damage you lost being able to combo off your battle rage and refill your hand so uh, kind of why you want to play for board a little bit more that's one big skipper and there's the shadow step well, uh, do we want to get Ron in here for an easy? Yeah, we'll see if he's yeah. free. I'm sure he'll kill he'll like this. <laughs> There's a small possibility. Let me see if Ron's available. See what's just texting or I, I just sent a message saying interview and he said yes sir. So uh... Okay. He just said yes sir to me too, so that's two yes sirs. Rano. Where is he at? Here he is. He probably has to grab his mic. Hey, hey Ron. Up, guys? There he is, Ron. What's up, baby? Congratulations on your win. That was Whew. tough. That was an intense set of matches for sure. Yeah, that that game five was really intense. I mean, it was kind of it was getting hairy there for you for a minute, and then I feel like Nate made a couple plays that were really sketchy, and it allowed you to come back. Like he played too quickly and didn't kill your lackey, allowing you to do uh, togwaggle into Wong just without having to develop anything. Yeah, I I was planning the Togwaggle turn for the next turn because I figured the Lackey was going to keep dying. I was just, uh, man, he had a lot of pressure. I, it was everything I could do to stay afloat. 
Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, I believe that matchup for you was unfavored. So. Uh, it's this, about fifty-fifty. About. If it's unfavored, uh, then Warrior maybe wins like fifty-one percent of the time. But it's pretty close. Rogue does rogue things, you know. That's true. Rogue is pretty broken, as, as you <laughs> said many times. Yeah. I was upset in the rogue mirror. I was like, as long as he doesn't find the taunt dragon, I'm probably going to win this game. Please don't be the taunt dragon. Please don't be the untargetable taunt dragon. Oh, there it there is. There it is. Hi. Oh, great. Yeah. Hi there. <laughs> yeah, so that, that one was dicey because I thought I was going to go up 2-1 in the rogue mirror, and then I had to fight back there, but I assumed he was going druid next, so I had to bring the hunter. Yeah, yeah, no, I and we for saw sure you I was gonna flick. lethal him with the hunter like quick, and then all of a sudden he's got this five four uh, Zilliax. It's like, oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was and, a rough in the rogue games. mirror, in the rogue mirror, we saw you flick the tog waggle. Was, was there any consideration to not doing that? Uh, it was just pressure. I I had a lethal setup, so I needed to get the five five off the board and put my own four four on the board just so I could get rid of everything he had and, you know, set up uh, a win. Yeah. But then, you know, he taunted his way out of it and won anyway. Maybe it was the wrong play. I don't know. I'd probably still do it again, given the chance. Yeah, I think it was correct. I mean, it, it's, it's tough, to, tough to say because Togwaggle, you end up having to flick your own Togwaggle out of your deck. It just feels bad. Oh, yeah. I'm never thrilled to do it, but I've done it before and I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no mercy. Hey, you gotta pull out all the stops sometimes to win games. Nate, I thought, played incredibly well. He was such a tough opponent, and yeah. I mean, there were a lot of games that were just decided on a razor thin margin. Yeah. Oh yeah, things are pretty tight. So even even the last part there, if he would have uh, taken out your taken out your uh, your lackey, probably would have had a little little bit better of a chance, maybe, but. Yeah, I was honestly I was hoping for um a shadow step for the boom pistol. Mm -hmm, yeah. So I could just lock out Galakrond again, but then I didn't think that was gonna be an option, so I felt like I had to go for just a different play there. I think what was it, the Leroy and then Fan of Knives? Is that what the, the following play was? Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Me me being old, I don't remember very well. Yeah, I remember after you played the, the Two, boom three, pistol, bomb uh, he top decked he top decked Kronks, and we saw an 11 mana Kronks in his hand. It's like, ooh, that's that. <laughs> yeah, that's what that bully's for. That bully's uh, really clutch sometimes. Oh, yeah. So, with that, well, do you, I was going to say, do you have, do you have any um, encouraging words for your team that's still got to play another game or two, I think? Um, you know, just keep doing what we do. Uh, we We got the the two games to one lead right now so um it's down to i mean if we get just one more win i think that punches our ticket to the next round i got a lot of faith in your mom Ked, and super murloc i think they're both excellent players and uh i'm excited to see how the rest of the matches shake out we're looking forward to trying to keep this playoff run going <laughs> with fourth and oh, uh, dude. there was one more play uh you picked a dragon in game one you had the option between Deathwing and I forget what you picked, but I wanted you to pick Deathwing so bad, and you didn't take him, man. Oh, and it could have won you the game. You could have come know. back because of the Deathwing. I know. I almost <laughs> took Deathwing. I was thinking about it. If you notice, the next time I got offered Deathwing, I did. You take did it. take it. Yeah, you hesitated, <laughs> yeah. but you took it. So. Yeah. And uh, I was like, okay, this could be a game winner. I was actually pretty disappointed when Dragon Queen gave me. Um, the zero mana warrior death wing. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want to wreck my own board. And then there was one possibility where like, maybe I could get lethal actually, if I played the death wing, but worst case scenario, I just clear my own board and lose. So yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to chance that, <laughs> but it felt yeah. weird having two death wings just sitting in my hand at the end of that hunter game. Yeah. Not getting played. One gold, one legendary gold Deathwing, and then, then the Warrior Deathwing. So, um, I'd also yeah, like cool. to point out that um, the only 
uh, kills in that game, in, in all those games were done by me. When I saw that I had lost, I suicided twice. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we noted yeah. that, dude. We noted that. So Yeah, got to sure. gotta take the um, the honorable way out, I think. Yeah. Yep. Based on... Uh, uh, did you have any questions for Ron? Um, no, I just uh, thought you played super well. The the Rogue uh, Warrior game especially, I thought you played uh, incredibly well, kept it close, even though you were really on the outs from the beginning. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. And thank you for joining us, Ron. Uh, it was a pleasure to cast your match. Thank you, guys. Uh, and thanks for everything you do, keeping the content going. Uh, I always really appreciate, you know, getting the chance to be on stream and you guys just kind of giving up your time to cast it. Uh, I think it's a, a really awesome thing you guys do, and it, it really helps make this community just super awesome. Thank you so much. Well, thanks, Ron, for the thank kind you. words. Yeah. Take care, guys. All right. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, you too. Bud. So, any final comments from our from our teachers of the day? So, teacher Sage and teacher oh, based. Uh, let's say, wash your hands, kids. <laughs> wash your hands and don't touch your mouth, eyes, and nose. Yep. Yeah, be careful. All right. Well, I guess that wraps it up for today's school stone. I want to thank everybody for joining us. And uh, I just want to run through, if I can get call up real quick. The matches for Salty Saturday. I believe there's only one match at 8 p.m. Um, Don Day is going to be hosting. Um, and the stream up with uh, possibly Mayana Don, Mark Shire, or Dano. Just depends on who's available. But that match is going to be the Legacy quarterfinals um, with uh, Super Murloc from 4th and in Inches versus <laughs> Siege um, from the Stubs. Um, we have Sunday Showdown, who is going to be hosted by Qu uh, Quaz, but he doesn't have a caster just yet. So anybody interested can jump in. Um, and he'll be broadcasting uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the Yellow Dart uh, Dad Legend versus uh, Agent uh, PWE or PeeWee uh, from um, uh, No Pros here. So should be fun. I wish you guys uh, all the best today, and if anybody's free tonight, you can tune in to watch Don Day. All right. Good day, everybody, and enjoy your afternoon. Yep, have a great weekend, guys. Yeah, enjoy. <laughs>